All right, let's get started tonight. So this is uh, another edition of Think with a Drink, the weekly webinar series brought to you by the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. And tonight's episode, this is one I've been looking forward to. And if I could spin around in my chair or do something crazy, or I had, what are those, those air horns things? Like if I could pull an air horn, <laughs> like this one for me is kind of a cool thing. It's where in the world should I retire? And because what, as Craig was doing most of the research for this, we found out is that, you know what, it's way too much for one episode. So we're going to break it into bite-sized pieces. This one is the USA, which will probably be broken into a, you know, a couple of other pieces later on. But it's going to be two parts to start, which is where in the world, the USA, and then where in the world, the rest of everywhere else, if you want to retire, where's the best place to be thinking about retiring? All right, it wasn't going to move there. <laughs> I get a little worried there. All right, real quick before we get started, just a you know quick checklist before we 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 lift off here. I just know the event's being recorded. You know everything is muted, and you don't have to worry about your cameras or anything because the only thing that's being recorded is the images being shown in the presentation. Uh, there is, however, a chat box. So if you do have any questions, feel free to use the chat box. Just chime in. My co-pilot, who I will introduce in a second, is here. He's to make sure that we, you know, moving along and go through everything. Uh, and also, if those questions pop up in the chat box, to make sure that those are getting looked at, possibly getting answered by him, or then throwing it out so that we can do it for everybody to hear. Speaking of your pilots for this evening, my name is Tom Alessi. I am the president of the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. I have been in financial services now for 23 years. I am an investment advisor. It means I am act as a fiduciary whenever giving guidance or advice to any of my clients. I wanna bring in my vice president, Craig, if you wanna introduce yourself. Sure, so I'm Craig Richardson. I'm a financial services representative. I've been helping families through their financial planning for the last 17 plus years. And what I do is help them reach their goals and have a better relationship with their money. Awesome, that is great. And like I said, Craig is not only gonna be chiming in with this, but also be uh, there to man the chat box should anything come up as far as questions are concerned. Uh, some quick disclosures for you. Uh, one is that, that you know this is all educational and informational. Um, we are a nonprofit. The Aries Fi uh, Foundation for Financial Education is a nonprofit organization. Uh, if you want to learn more about us and what we do, you can go to our website. It's www.ariesfoundation.org. Um, but generally, we just ask that if you are going to share this in any way, that you do it in a educational and informational manner. All right, that was a lot of talking so far for me. So now we get to the fun part of the evening, and I lost my head with this one. So for everybody out there, this is Think With a Drink. You know, Craig and I like to do this because uh, even though the we're trying to do as much education and information as possible, we like to be a little bit loose with that, a little bit casual, a little bit relaxed. And the only way we really feel we can do that is if we have something cold to sip on to imbibe as we go along and do this presentation. So I lost my head here because I am drinking, this is a summer shandy from the Black Hat Brew Works in Bridgewater. Now, most of you may know uh, a summer shandy from those folks out in Minnesota, Ligenkugel. They were the first ones to really push the summer shandy. And then of course, locally Narragansett did Dell's Homer shandy, but a shandy is just basically beer and lemon or beer and lemon lime is what it comes down to. And, you know, it was like 60 degrees or more today. So I sort of had the summer vibe going. I'm, you know, trying to push spring gear quicker. What about you, Craig? What are you drinking tonight? Well, as you're going to find out, I'm, I'm trying to milk the tail end of a case of Sam Adams from the holidays. And so I'm going just the opposite. I'm going with a Sam Adams Porter. Holiday port. Oh, yeah, see, you're ready for cold to come back. See, you're bringing a cam. preparing. Summer, like, <laughs> so, Ooh. cut that with a knife. Yeah, meanwhile, I got the opposite. I got that's like a fresh squeezed lemon. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of lemon. That's a lot of citrus in that. I don't know, like, if you could take more than one of those at a time type of thing. 
to try this and then drink a lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe on like like a really really hot day after you cut the grass, like the thing, right? Like you know. But anyway, onward and upward. <laughs> so, the agenda: some things to consider as we go through this. And again, this is where in the world should I retire? Part one: the USA. So it's basically breaking it down by the states and where they come in, and sort of a ranking system. And then there's honorable mentions that are there. And then some things to be thinking about as you're trying to plan and plot this all out in terms of what you're doing, right? So let's talk about some of those, those things to consider as part of this, right? So you have an adjusted cost of living. And Craig, why don't you go through that adjusted cost of living? Sure, so adjusted cost of living is gonna be based on you know, what it costs you to live in different states. Not all states are the same. Some housing prices are higher, some tax rates are higher. Uh, so it's all, you know, what the cost of living is in different states to get the same, you know, quality of life. Okay. And it says general tax friendliness, but then retired taxpayer friendliness. Like, so we're talking about retired here. So we really want to be focusing on the retired taxpayer friendliness. Well, I mean, it depends on when you're retiring and who's retiring. So you may retire at 65, but your wife may be a few years younger, right? So there may be- Then won't I keep her working? Isn't that the whole idea of that? Well, but you still might want to move. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so overall, what the tax friendliness is of a state, depending on when you want to pull that trigger. And, you know, the conversation we get a lot lately, Tom, is people want to retire early. They don't want to wait till 65. Right. When can I, when yeah. can I pull the trigger? Because uh, I, I want to do some of the things that are on my bucket list, and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do them. I just had that conversation. With, see, I'm old now. See, that tells you. I just had a conversation with one of my friends about that, who was like, we should go play golf in Scotland. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm ready to play golf in Scotland right now. <laughs> I, I said, what about at 65? He goes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it at 65. Yeah. Hey, I understand. You know, retired tax yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Tax friendly is on a state and inheritance tax. Uh, amazing. A lot of states don't have an estate tax. So, right. yeah. Uh, you know, and then you bring in in home and adult day services, and then uh, the share of the population that's over age 65, because that's a consideration, right? Other like people that are generally in the same category. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the issues when you retire is you move away from the friends you know if you make that decision to move. And so it's good to know there's other people in your age bracket going through the same situation and you can make new friends so there you go all new experience all new experience okay so the way this is broken down is it's broken down into sort of like a top 10 list right and so we're giving you number 10 we're, you know going down on a scale number one being the best so we're starting at number 10 and drum roll coming in at number 10 which shouldn't surprise anybody is the state of arizona because everybody talks about that. Like, where's the two places that anybody says where they're going to go, right? They're going to go to Florida. Or they're going to go to Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know if Florida is on the list yet, but right now, Arizona <laughs> is, right? So, so Arizona comes in at number 10, and there's some of those factors. I was surprised that the average home cost was 257 Well, I mean, you do have Phoenix, right? And you do have Flagstaff. So, you know, the rest of the, the, you don't think it's really high because most of the rest of the state isn't populated. And populated in different areas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you want to live in the coyotes, it's really cheap, right? But <laughs> so that's basically that's basically just across the entire state. Yeah. And we've actually driven across that state. Well, I understand that. that, but I mean like like so buying in in say the Phoenix central area is gonna be higher than that. Absolutely. Oh. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so then average family income, and there is no estate tax in Arizona. No wonder everybody flocks there. Yes, there is none. As long as you're a resident, though, got to be the resident. So then it gives you the average temperature, which for those who would rather be in warmer climes, right, and, and be warmer all the time and cold, you know, that is a big idea. And you remember, too, it's a big state. The further south you are towards Phoenix, the warmer it's going to be. Right. The further north, you could be up in the mountains in Flagstaff and it'd be colder. So you can pick your climate. So then it, then it gives a, an affordability rating. That's based on cost of everything, goods, services, all of that stuff. Yep, it's a uh, cost of living, uh, home, healthcare, the whole nine yards. 
And then quality of life ranking, is that among all the all the other states or is that just, just among the metro areas? What is that based on? That's based on all, you know, it's, it's a ranking within the whole 50 United States, but it's based on what things there are to do there. Right? How? What kind of quality of life you have? Oh, are there Miami, museums? Yeah. Are there restaurants? Are there activities that you can do? And Arizona is great for being outside, but yeah. other than that, it's a long trip to do anything else. Yes, that can <laughs> so, be the case. Yes, but if you like the outdoors and you like the dry climate, it's a good consideration. Oh, it is number ten on the list for that reason. All right, so moving on here, we go to number nine. And this was a surprise for me. Number nine is the the, the Granite State. New Hampshire comes in at number nine, which I, I found to be surprised by that. Um, it would be higher or lower on the list? I didn't expect it on the list. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, the, the reason it's on the list. Yeah, What's no, that? no, no. So, I mean, again, I understand low tax rates, no estate, no estate tax rate. Um, you know, that well, no average temperature thing that's, I think, a little misleading. I understand it gets warm in the summer, but, and it's funny, we'll talk about this as we go through. There's a lot of cold states that show up on this list. Yes, there are. I mean, the thing with New Hampshire is you get the four seasons without having to pay the Boston prices. It's, it's right. less expensive I, than, that's, than Boston. That was part of it. So that, that quality of life ranking there where it comes in at number two, like that I can see because there's so many things you can do. Much like Arizona, you talk about all the stuff you can do outdoors, but then there's a lot that goes on indoors and the different seasons then create different activities. Well, there's a lot of people who want to retire and they don't want to lose the four seasons. Or, you know, Some people actually like New England. <laughs> they actually like having all four seasons. But you know, if you're trying to stay in the Boston area when you retire, as we found out for most people, it can be very expensive. Right. So. Um, so this is a way to keep the four seasons, still have, you know, really good health care, a high quality of life, but like I said, have some affordability. And the nice part about New Hampshire is there's no sales tax, there's no retirement income tax, and the only tax there is on that income is 5% on the interest and dividends that you might receive. Right. So, so unless you own property, which there is a property tax, you're in a really good situation. Right. Yeah, no, and that does that is a consideration. It is a it is a factor. So then, number eight is Utah. Now, Utah, yes. like it's very funny because I was just talking to somebody who who was forced to go to Utah. Like the 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 employer, they they closed one division and moved it, and they had to move and relocate to Utah. And they're like, like Utah, like really, like from the East Coast. I'm like, I just couldn't imagine that, but. <laughs> Well, I think once again, it's a, it's another change of, of scenery. It's a change of, you know, there are 17 national parks and monuments in Utah. Yeah. So if you enjoy the outdoors, you know, and all that activity, it's fantastic for that. It's known as a beehive state. And I guess they do also produce lots of fresh produce and vegetables. So it's, if you like that, you know, that laid back, you know, outdoorsy lifestyle, it's a great place to go. Um, I did notice that the, the home price was higher. It seemed higher than the others as far as, is that just, I mean, I would assume. Yeah, especially in relation to income, right? So, you know, I think, you know, it's probably a supply and demand issue at this point, right? It's just starting to become a more popular state for retirement, so. Okay, so if people starting to, to go there type of thing, yeah, and mm -hmm. then. The average temperature, you know, again, it's it's there. It's <laughs> and the quality of life ranking at twenty. So I I assume that's partly because even though they do get the snow as well, the snow is usually in higher elevations. It doesn't come everywhere, and you wind up with some of that really sort of the same Arizona theme. Like, yeah, if I like to be outdoors and do stuff outdoors, okay, but. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why it's number eight. <laughs> All right, number seven on our list. Oh, look, we're still staying up in the mountains. What is that? It's Montana. Like, Montana comes in. This one really threw me. I was like, Montana. <laughs> like, but, you know, I do know a lot of, of celebrities, a lot of professional athletes have places in Montana. Well, it's big sky country, right? I mean, That's where they go to get away. Like they, you know, they they buy these 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 large parcels of land, and they basically just they don't have to deal with anybody out there. Um, 
it just seemed like, you know, Montana just seemed strange to me as far as one that came up, quality of life ranking. Again, 18 stays somewhere in that same, like, hey, if you like to be outdoors and you're, you're don't, doesn't it get cold there too, though? Like, average temperature is 44. That's like New Hampshire. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it can get very cold in Montana. Absolutely. I, once again, I think it's just people trying to get away, trying to get away from the crowds, you know, uh, the per state cap, per person, the state cap, per land per person per capita is lower out there so it's you know it, it gives you that nice mix you have the cities there like you also have a lot of country and the cost of living as you can see the average family income is about fifty-seven thousand. so it's a fairly you know fairly in the middle well what was 14th rank 14th in the country for affordability so right so that's that's very affordable then so life life basically doesn't cost as much to do stuff in montana yeah, and you know, the issue too, when, we, when you go through and you try to rank all these states, a lot of this is going to be determined on the type of lifestyle that you want to live. If you like the big outdoors, if you, you know, it's popular because people are trying to be more recreational, trying to be healthier, they're trying to be, you know, be active. This allows for that. Um, if you're not that person, you know, then there's different picks. So it's just a matter of. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the nice things is there is no estate tax and the income tax rates are graduated. So for a retiree, they're usually fairly low. Right. All right. And now moving on to number six. Number six comes in. Look, there's North Dakota. Now, North Dakota is a freaking cold state. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to be honest with this one. I, I don't know why anybody want to move to North Dakota myself. But that being said, it's got a low uh, income tax rate. I mean, the highest is 2.9% for the state. Um, there is no estate tax. It's got a fairly modest, uh, you know, uh, cost of living there as far as, you know, family total income. Housing isn't overly expensive. And some of the nice parts about it is, you know, North Dakota, just like a lot of these other states, has great scenery. Uh, it sits on the Missouri River. Yeah. And it's uh, great towns like Bismarck and Fargo and Grand Forks. Grand Forks. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to go there? Well, I have a great story with Grand Forks, North Dakota. So I'm in college. One of my one of the guys I, I hung around with in college, his his dad was in the army. So they were always moving. You know, but he grew up in Okinawa and they moved all over the, the world, basically. But he had been he had been at, at um, Devons, mm -hmm. living in Massachusetts. And when he was in college, his dad got transferred to Grand Forks, North Dakota. Oh he had no idea where Grand Forks, North Dakota was. Now he's in college. We're sitting there. He's like, you know, my 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 family. They're going. They gotta go. They're going to Grand Forks, this air, this army base, and in, in Grand Forks, North Dakota. On the weather that night, as we got the TV on, the weather guy comes up and says, "It's minus twenty four in Grand Forks, North Dakota." Oh my God! <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm never visiting my parents ever in terms of. <laughs> So yeah, it gets cold as you can see. The average temperature so far that's the lowest one so far, right? That's a that's a cold state basically. But quality of life ranking sixteen. So this again is one of those like Craig said, the big outdoors, a lot of space. Like if you're tired of being you know on top of somebody, living in the city your whole life, and you want to get away and just relax. I mean, this obviously is one of the places to be thinking about. But if you want to be cold. Yeah, and, and still, you know, nationally ranking that, you know, the health care is, is pretty decent from, a, from that perspective. And quality of life is pretty decent from that perspective. You can be out in the wilderness, but once again, go to these great towns like Forks. <laughs> it's just a funny thing that that came up. Number five, right? What's number five? Look at this, we're staying in the frozen tundra here. We're in Minnesota now. Minnesota. Well, it's great. Yes. We're talking about the summer shandy and lagoon cool. So there you go. So you had a we had a Minnesota theme going with that in terms of it. So Minnesota pops up, and so that estate tax we're talking about that from the state provision, right? That's what we're talking right. about with that, and it mm -hmm. says only if you go over three million. Right. So that's not going to affect the majority of people. Right. And that's three million. You're going to get to three million. It's not like Massachusetts, who we know, love and dearly hold that, that they'll retro you back to dollar one and start from that point. As far as the research I did, uh, it was three million and beyond. So um, 
you know, I'm not, if it's going back to day one, I, I didn't see that in my research. That's more of a friendly state, unlike Massachusetts, who says, no, 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 we're going to call you all the way back to the beginning and take care of Friendly in some ways. I mean, the income tax rate was a little higher than I would like to see, um, you know, but the average home price is fairly low and the average, you know, cost of living is fairly low. I think one of the big draws here um, is healthcare. It's the number one state in the country for healthcare. Wow, I did not realize. See, that's one of those things. Like, like you see the bottom two there: healthcare mm -hmm. and quality of life. And the quality of life there, clearly, because there's so much with the, you know, what is it, ten thousand lakes, right? There's so much activity, so many things to do from that perspective. And it's also centrally located in, you know, to the United States. I mean, you can fly to California, you can fly to, you know, the East Coast. You can go to Canada. I mean, it's it's pretty centrally located, and there's a lot to do there. It's an up and coming. I mean, more yeah. centrally located. Let's not be let's not sugarcoat this. Well, I'm not saying it's in the middle of the country, but it's a little bit northern. So it's, you know, but yeah. you can get to the you know, um, and well, it's warmer that's, than North Dakota, obviously at 42 degrees average, almost 43, which is close to New Hampshire. I would have expected you know Minnesota to be be farther down on that. Yeah, and great hunting out there too. So if you like the outdoor hunting, fishing, all that stuff. Right. That's the fishing, hunting, the whole bit, everything that goes on with that and everything to do with it. Right. It's home of the screaming eagles, if you remember the TV show Coach. <laughs> that was Coach. They're actually the golden gophers, but that's okay. That's that's Minnesota. They're they're gophers. <laughs> I was talking about the TV show. <laughs> but I'm talking about the real thing. All right, so number where are we going with number four now? Uh, number four is Delaware. So we finally come off this this frozen tundra that we've been sliding along on the top of the, the, the country here. Delaware brings us now. Delaware is an interesting one because that one just didn't really click to me. It's not like you, you think you hear or talk to people that say, "Gee, I'm going to retire and go to Delaware." Well, there's a reason why people will go to Delaware. Um, a couple of them. One, you can see right there, the income tax rates are favorable. Once again, it's a graduated income tax. And if you're you know, in retirement, you're usually in your lower bracket. So you're paying very, very little income tax. There's no estate tax. The cost of living for being still in the Northeast is fairly low. Um, the average temperature is just a little bit higher. Um, but as you can see there, it's very, very affordable. It's significantly higher. Average temperature is in the 50s. Yeah. The, the nice thing about Delaware is, you know, sometimes people don't want to move too far away from family. So if you have a lot of people, you know, family who live around the New England area uh, or, you know, the east, you can still be within driving distance of Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, all those areas while being in an affordable zone. Yeah, the healthcare ranking, the affordability ranking, uh, you know, it, it is a little off on the quality of life ranking. I'm going to assume... That is sort of the what we talked about in the beginning of this, where there's probably not a lot of over 65 flocking there. Right. right. So you're not going to have a lot of those activities. It's not centered around retirement. Right. Right. But at number four, you never know that could change. <laughs> yeah, and they, you know, certainly like you're talking with Utah, that might be one of those, hey, look, this is an affordable place to live and and start finding those zones in terms of affordability. Yep. All right, so now we're going to get to the top three. And so the top three, we're going back to the cold <laughs> in Colorado. But it, Colorado is actually one of those, you know, I, I see this. There's, when, this one didn't surprise me because I think Colorado is one of those very cool places on the planet that is just, that's, that's it, it's got everything. Well, it, it has what you're really concerned about. It has mountains and it has breweries. It's home of Coors, right? <laughs> Get that Rocky Mountain High. <laughs> I've actually toured the Coors Brewery. Have you really in Colorado? Yeah, I was there. I, you know, we, we were in, we were in Colorado. I was going to Coors. Yes. Okay. Do you, okay. So yeah, they put a lot of water in that Coors beer. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, actually, uh, to be honest with you, at the time, which was very funny, they they were launching what is now known as Killian's Red Irish. Oh. I was. Okay. I was in the the test grouping, the test batching of Killings. They were testing it at the time. That's how long ago I went through there, basically. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no. So, but there are they, they, you know, a lot of major universities. So, you know, there, there's always that part of it in terms of going through it. Uh, again, it's a cold place. It's the average temperature is 42. You know, drives you right down. But 
But, you know, look at those, the affordability, health care, and quality of life ranking. I mean, you know, when you're talking about having all three of those grouped within the top 12, you know there's, there's something going on. Yeah, and you got to look here. You know, the average home price is a little bit higher than most of the other places we've been looking at. But I think the other cost of living, as far as, you know, going out to eat, uh, buying groceries, all those other types of things are, are fairly low. So it kind of evens itself out why it gets at affordability 11. But another big thing, retirement, that you have to consider is healthcare, And this is number four in the country. So that's, you know, who, I would have never thought Colorado was number four for healthcare, but that's the ranking. It's, it's all the marijuana, you know, ever since they, they <laughs> that, right? Just keep everybody nice and stable and just, you know, you dude, you know, in terms of going through everything. You may be sick, but you don't care. <laughs> Why are it's so low, right? <laughs> All right, so moving on to number two now. And this one, I will say, of, of the list, this one was the one that really did sort of say, hey, you know, this this threw me off Virginia, right? Virginia just didn't, didn't factor to me being, again, I sort of like Delaware, like one of those places. I understand there's Virginia Beach and and so on but this is a this is a big state where there's a lot of this state that's that's you know out in the vast wilderness you know you talk about the, the mountains and the outdoors and stuff but well, it's one of those states to give you a little bit of everything right yes and and that's probably one of the nice reasons for it i mean first off it has all four seasons but they're much milder than new england massachusetts new hampshire that area correct um, so far the highest of the temperatures average at 55. Yeah, and it also, you know, it does have everything from mountains to beaches and everything in between. So for those people who don't want to compromise, you know, you have it all within driving distance. The other thing you may like, I thought was interesting, is there are 230 local wine vineyards in Virginia. <laughs> so if you just want to drive around, <laughs> just hitting tastings and vineyards, I mean, it's, uh, well, I never would have thought I so much. That, I, won't, I won't diss them because obviously I don't know them, but I've never really, nobody's ever said to me, hey, did you try this wine from Virginia? Uh, I don't know, but now you have an excuse to go down and see, right? Next time you're down in Virginia. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm, the wine is, you know, grapes are grapes. If you can grow them, that's fine. I just don't know that you can grow them that, that effectively there. But, but you know what? If you can, that's great. But again, the same vineyards, they must be. Healthcare and quality of life come in in, in high numbers. Mm -hmm. With that, um, again, I just it, it, it just threw me in terms of, of the states, right? The, when you think of that. And then number one with a drum roll, doctor surprised with this, right? It's Florida, All right? Florida comes in at number one. Could put some confetti in that slide. Huh? Should have put some confetti on that slide. I know. <laughs> or something, right? You know, because you know, the reason people have flocked there for a long time, besides the weather, is there's no taxes. Yeah, it's a tax haven. Absolutely. Yep. And the the, uh, the homes are still fairly reasonable, depending on which area and where you're going within the state. I mean, again, another large state. And you can just see it's warm. So, you know, unlike Arizona, which does slide all over the place, depending on where you land in Arizona, if you stay in Phoenix, obviously it's warm all the time there. In Florida, it's pretty much warm everywhere as far as that's concerned. Yeah, sometimes too warm. You know, in the summertime, it gets a little bit humid. Um, yeah. But this one came out because of everything across the board. It wasn't number one in anything, um, but it's fairly moderate across the board for everything. Now, the big thing that's really good about Florida is they're very friendly to retirees. You know, lots and lots of people retire there. So what's that mean? All the restaurants are, you know, yeah, a lot of buffets, a lot special. Of right. I mean, you have, you have retirement communities down there where you can drive a golf cart around the whole community. I mean, it's, it's really just set up for retirement. What is um, that sign for La Boca Vista? What was that with this? <laughs> with the, his parents, right? And then, like I said, and where you want to, leave, you know, from Miami all the way up to um, Jacksonville, I mean, it's a ton of territory in deciding where you want to, where you want to be. And, and you can also be on the um, East Coast at the Atlantic Ocean, or if you like it a little, you know, calmer, you can be on the uh, West Coast in the, in the Gulf. So just a lot of, you know, a lot of choices. Yeah, no, no, no. There's, and that's the thing. I mean, that's ultimately what it's known for. It's known for the weather. It's known for the 
the beaches, and it's known for the fact that that is basically like you said, it's a tax haven in terms of it. So, uh, where else can you play and, golf and have alligators on the golf course? Yes, and and <laughs> but you know that's the thing. Like if you're talking about that, hey, where are all the sixty-five year olds hanging out? You know that's where they're hanging out. So. If that's what you're thinking about, that's one of the places to consider. But like Craig said, for some people, that heat thing isn't something you want to take all the time. I yeah. mean, the thing, when it comes to longevity, though, in retirement, the number one thing, you, you know, you think, well, it's your health and healthcare. No, it's socialization. Yes, absolutely. That, I agree. Number one agree. Yes. So that's another reason why Florida is a big, because it has all that social networking. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm a big believer in if you're getting out and you're you're active and doing things that yeah, that that adds to the life expectancy more so than than pretty much any other factors, or at least quality of life. Right. All right. So now we're gonna bring in an honorable mention. So honorable mention here, drum roll, please. Should we go to it's Alabama? We stay right there, right? You know, that's there's just you know, what is that? The Gulf Coast, right? That's a Florida Bama shore there, or whatever the hell they call that. That's Stupid. right, the Florida <laughs> Bama line, or whatever. <laughs> Alabama, that's where Forrest is from. <laughs> oh, affordability is number one, right? So it's it's the life, life is cheap there. Yeah, that's the honorable mention there. Um, you, you know, if you're really looking for a, a much more affordable place to live. Uh, Alabama might be your key. Um, it, the it, you know average family income is fifty one thousand. Um, some of the down parts is you know healthcare um, is ranked fifth. It's it's last in the country for healthcare. Yeah. Uh, quality of life ranking forty fifth. Why? Because the weather's you can see the average temperature is one of the highest that we have on the board. Right. Right. Uh, and it can be humid. Uh, but once again, if you're looking for a low class place to live. And you like being in the golf, and you like eating shrimp. <laughs> Alabama may be your place, right? Maybe your place, but again, that quality of life thing, much like Virginia, Delaware, I don't see a lot of the sixty-five-year-olds going there yet, right? Like maybe there's they're starting to get those enclaves, you know, the the fifty-five plus communities popping up, right, right. I, you know, as a whole, it doesn't have the same appeal as some of the other locations. And then right. the last, we say it's most affordable. Look, see, I forgot right. that. There you go. That's what it is. That's the whole draw there, the affordability aspect. And then another honorable mention, and of course, because we had to do it, it's Massachusetts. You spelled it wrong, but that's okay. I screwed that up. I didn't look at it in terms of going through that. It's no easy. M-A-S-S-A-C-H-U-S-E-T-T. -S -S -E -T -T. What did I mess up? Yes. No E at the, at the end. Massachusetts. Okay. No e <laughs> well, I, I like doing, I like many Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah. well, any, anyway, uh, it had to come in as an honorable mention because it has a number one quality of life in the country. The highest quality of living. Highest uh, quality of living, and also because we live here, so we had to prop it up. Otherwise, we probably would have gotten something from the Mass Tourist Board about this. And <laughs> bad things about us. Now, I mean, the idea here is Massachusetts does look. The, you know, for a long time, everybody has said it. There's, there's it, not only the number of of colleges and universities that add to everything here. Um, you know, but the high level of of uh, college learning that goes on here, which then leads to a lot of industry and specifically healthcare that goes on here. Yeah, you have a ton of healthcare. You have a ton of culture. I mean, you have some of the oldest uh, colleges in the in the country in Massachusetts. Um, it's diverse. Everything from you know going out to the Cape where you can be on the ocean to being in Western Mass where you can be in the mountains. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who do like all four seasons. Um, and like you said, a lot of education, a lot of art, a lot, there's just a lot of things to do, uh, which makes it a very great quality of living. The problem though, I always talk to about with, um, you know, retirees is it's very expensive to, to retire here. Um, it's also you know, very you do, expensive to die here. What's that? It's also expensive to die here. Oh yes. Because you have that 16% tax rate on the States over a million dollars. And that goes back to the first dollar, like you were saying earlier, Tom. Right. So. Um, but Massachusetts comes in, it, it is one of those. So that gives you 12 
right? As far as places to be thinking about, if you haven't thought of it, or you're in that, that mode of, hey, you know, maybe I should be thinking about this or should be looking at it. This gives you some of that, that do your homework, right, Craig? That's a big part of this and trying to figure out where do you want to go? Where do you want to be part of? And I know, and Craig has had conversations with people as well on this, that sometimes they throw out someplace without really thinking or doing the research about what that's going to be like for them. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes too, the big thing that stops people from moving, uh, Tom, is those connections they have, family, friends, mm -hmm. those types of things will keep them rooted, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But one thing I have learned is that, you know, with the advent of social media that we've learned in the last couple of years because of COVID is that, you know, the world's smaller than it used to be. You can be live on screen with people you know, all day long at no cost. It's not like when we had to pay long distance fees to talk to people across the country. And, you know, you can be anywhere in this country on a plane in six hours. So right. it really is, you know, it really opens up opportunities to kind of move to places that you may not otherwise have before. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, sort of getting your finances in order, right? So as you're thinking of that and looking at it, right, you know, some of those things become you know, the income that you're going to be generating or what you have for income, right? And for most of us, without pensions, that's Social Security. Right. I mean, hopefully, you know, you got to, this is why retirement is just as unique for each individual as doing your own personal budget and planning and all that is, because you have, what's your retirement income going to look like? Right. And this is a good time to start looking at that. You want to know what your retirement paycheck is going to be before you retire. <laughs> you don't want to wait to get to 65 and then try to figure out what you can afford. Yeah. Uh, that way you can plan in advance. And then by knowing what your income is, that may make you decide I can afford to live here and retire or I can't. Sometimes you can afford to live in Massachusetts when you're working, but you can't afford to live in Massachusetts when you're retired. Right. When you don't have the same quality of life. Um, you also want to look at, you know, your, your protection planning. And this is a big one. You start talking about long-term care and those are huge, varied costs across the country. I mean, New England, California, you know, two most expensive places in the country to get care. So that's where like, a place like Alabama, even once all around the list for healthcare, it's going to be very, very affordable or Utah is going to be more affordable as far as, you know, getting that care. Uh, and then estate planning. You know, it's 30, I think there's 34 or 36 states in the United States who don't have any estate tax. So that's something to take into consideration. Massachusetts has it. I don't see it going away anytime soon. Connecticut, no. Rhode Island, all very similar. Um, so, you know, New England is not the you know best place to die. <laughs> well, again, if you're concerned about that and some of the things. And so these are some of those factors when you start looking at it, as like Craig mentioned, it might just be, hey, you know, I want to stay in this four seasons. I like the idea, I, you know, why anybody would like to, I don't know, I'll probably stay in the snow with all that said with this, right? But like Craig said, you know, obviously New Hampshire came on, on the list as a consideration to be thinking about, all right, well, I'm going to pull up stakes and I'm just going over the border and God bless your 45 minutes to the city, you know, it'd be without traffic, you know, to get to Boston from New Hampshire, just over the border, but you're over the border. Well, just because you don't pay the state income tax in Massachusetts anymore, you had a 5% raise. Yeah, right. right. And you don't have the less tax. There's another 6%. But there's no so, estate tax. And no estate tax. So, yeah. So, like I said, you get the same weather, but you don't have the same bill. So, um, yeah. And you know what, Tom? I mean, this is so great because we want to do different series. And this is part one. You know, the other thing is what specific cities in the country are better than others. Correct. That, that, we're going to break it down. We're going to chop it into two regions and break them down because there are in every state certain cities that, you know, because I'm thinking of like Las Cruces, New Mexico, and some places like that where there's Santa Fe, where there's, you know, a, a, a large population. But the rest of the state probably doesn't come in anywhere near in terms of the ranking just because it doesn't, you know, it's never going to, going to be the place for everybody to go. Right, you have these smaller pockets within these different states that may not come on the top 10. Right. Um, the other thing I'm, we want to get into is, you know, retiring overseas. 
the, well, that's, that's, that's part two. That's the yeah. next in the series in terms of going through it. That'll come up in a couple of weeks. We'll finish part two and then we'll break it down and go from there. But I'm not going to break down into the, the rest <laughs> of the world. It's going to get a little crazy in terms of the album. Just something to park in your mind. Maybe be aware yeah. of for that one. You know, so what we do here at the Aries Foundation, we, we try to help everybody sort of figure that out, right? So if you're just in the mix of this or just thinking about it, these are some of those conversations. These are some of the things you need to be putting together. See, these are things you need to be thinking about. That's why we're here. That's what we try to help everybody to do. You know, basically, it's a little help getting started with all of this. And we offer everybody an opportunity, you know, meet with us, have a conversation, go through it. And we don't charge for that. The foundation is a nonprofit. That's why we do it. If you're interested, you can just drop yes into the chat box. We're happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, there is an evaluation form. Craig, I sent you that. Do you have that link? I do. I do. So if you could drop that in the chat box, that would be tremendous. So we do these presentations at organizations, businesses, community support, and even for state agencies across the region, you know, throughout New England. And what we try to do is get feedback. We appreciate any feedback and value it from our audience because we like to make sure we're staying topical, we're having fun with you and you're getting some information. But also if you have a topic or an idea or something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, we're happy to try to put it together and put it into a future episode because we're always looking for new topics and to find out what the, you know, the audience out there is thinking about or what they'd like to learn about. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? There we go. <laughs> so this is Craig and I in our more formal attire. Yes, that's TB12. Those are Brady jerseys from his days as a Patriot. We still have them because he was still playing. He did just retire. Now he's going to buy the Miami Dolphins. I have no idea what's going on with this guy. But rumor after rumor every single day. Just know that when we were out and about and doing in-person and live shows, this is what, kind of what we do. They were custom jerseys and we would have fun with the audience and be there in those jerseys. Uh, so staying with a think with a drink, what's on tap, what's coming up. Next week, it's all about Bitcoin, right? So we do a deeper dive into cryptocurrencies. And then what we've got coming up for future topics, uh, nine IRA mistakes, steps and things you should absolutely avoid doing with an IRA. Uh, a diversity employer toolkit. This is in conjunction with the Perkins School for the Bind. So if you know any employers out there, this would be a great one for them to come join us on because they've got a toolkit to help employers be more inclusive and, and help with diversity hiring. Uh, getting physically and financially fit. So we want to, you know, the way to be, be both mentally, physically well and being, and then by this, not that, eating healthy on a budget. So these are some of the topics we got coming up. We just haven't slotted them in for dates yet, um, but that's everything we got. Craig, any questions in the chat oh, box? No questions at this time. Okay, so on that note, I am gonna say thanks to everybody out there and have a good evening.